you'll hear that sound a lot down here in in Mexico because that's the ice cream cart sound. But let's just sit down. I want to give you a little bit of a discussion about photos, taking photos in Mexico. Hola, bienvenidos a México. Soy Avenzain y soy tu guío. Guío o guía por las calles de México. I do a lot of videos in the studio, but I'm out in the streets today just walking. Uh, the light is pretty harsh. We still have sun up here, so it's, it's not too magical. It's a little noisy. People are bustling about down here. I'm in Carrero State in Mexico. This is basically the dead center of Mexico. And I thought I'd do a quick video about doing street photography here in Mexico. Uh, it's, it's a land of magical light and I know a lot of people want to visit here. And so I thought I'd do some more of these videos for you guys that are outside. So there's a lot of things to see in this harsh light. It's a little tough. I think for street photography, a lot of times we think, oh, it's sunny, but if I shoot in black and white or something, I'll get nice, strong, harsh shadows, contrasty lines, right? I think that can be true if you're like in an urban environment or that kind of a situation where you have uh, strong shadows being cast by buildings and stuff. But if you look around most of the time, when you have this harsh light, what you actually get is a lot of specular dappled light that's very inconsistent. Let's speak a little bit about just the shooting aspect. Aside from the aspect of shooting streets anywhere, right? It's always a little bit, I think, intimidating. That's why I've been trying to push myself on street photography so much. Not only because there's so much soul and life to be captured, and I'm in a great place for that down here, but also because that challenge of being able to look someone in the eye. One thing I've noticed in a lot of my street photo photographs of people and a lot of other street photographs of people is we're afraid to wait till they look at us to take the photo because we're afraid they'll be angry. Um, how do people respond to photography here in, in Mexico? Generally fine because even, even the even the further southern Latin American countries, and especially Mexico, everybody, pretty much everybody, has a, a smartphone. It's just, that's how they communicate. Well, a lot of people don't have computers, but they have smartphones. Look at these old wheelies here. This is kind of cool. It is a little bit harsh. It's just a cool, cool wheelies. That's a neat Jeep. Uh, so when you are interacting with people, in general, the culture is pretty warm, especially to tourists. I love shooting with the X100V, not only because I'm getting good images in a small camera, but it's not too intimidating. If I'm out with a full-size SLR, I attract so much attention. But a Leica-style body like this, a Fuji, a rangefinder, a compact like this, I look like I'm serious, but I also look like a tourist. And I think that dynamic uh, is a little more relaxing. And if I'm just taking photos, for example, with a cell phone and pointing it at people, I might seem a bit like a creeper. If I'm using this, I seem like a tourist exploring the culture, which is exactly what I am. And if, if on a very rare occasion that somebody's like, why are you taking photos? I'll just say, it's all me, me gusta Mexico, me explora la cultura. And uh, if you know your Spanish, if you know even a little bit of Spanish, it helps because they, they value when, when you speak their language anywhere in the world, right? Everybody values if you respect them and speak their language. Things are much more kind of free for all down here. You know, the streets aren't, aren't regulated and, and perfect. The sidewalks aren't necessarily clean. There's a lot happening on the streets. You know, here's a fruteria. And so there's all this stuff. And I know if you're a photographer and you're watching me walk by these things, you're probably thinking, oh man, I could do, I could do so much with this. You know, you got people in the taquerias and you've got people eating and walking. And as the light sets in the evening, it just gets better because then you start getting that magic hour light. It just gets really amazing. I think people are afraid of, you know, the, the violence. Like there's so much propaganda about Mexico. I know that numbers wise, because 
of the drug war, Mexico has a lot of violence. And I, I could go on all day right, as, a, as a human rights activist about how pissed all this drug war stuff makes me and the violence that's created across the world. But I want to stay focused here. First of all, tourists, they, they want to see tourists because there's so much in the news and so much propaganda about Mexico, it affects tourism. So when they see an outsider, a lot of times they want to, they want them to see the best of the country. And so in general, I would say they're pretty welcoming. Now, I think it's important to be considerate of what, you know, what's going on around you and be aware. I think any street photographer, no matter where you are, you need to, you need to be able to read the situation. Especially if you don't know the language and you're a tourist, you want to know anywhere you go how to read the situation. But I think a lot of times it's less of a language thing and more of just feeling it out as photographers. I think that's a good skill. And that's one of the reasons I think street shooting is great. You're going to see color. You're going to see activity different times a day. Uh, you're going to see things kind of more flying by the seat of their pants in the community and in the neighborhoods. But if you go down to the central areas, the central is like the community gathering place. So there tends to be lights, and beautiful old buildings and stuff. Whereas out in the neighborhoods, it's just more everyday life. But I think for those of us that didn't grow up in that, we see a different perspective. Maybe, maybe if a Mexicano goes to the US, we see things that are so interesting that we take for granted. Um, but here, the things that they take for granted, like colorful buildings and doors and the cars that are driving the streets and all this kind of stuff, it's, uh, it's a whole different perspective, I think, in the way that we see. Do I worry if I'm walking in the night? You know, people are like, oh, you don't go out at night, you don't drive at night. I've been in, in Mexico for like four years now. <laughs> I drive at night all the time. It's just like anywhere, including the United States, you want to be aware of your surroundings. When I start is and you want to be aware of you know what what's going on I, and i was the same in the states because it's just smart to to be aware if somebody's watching me if someone's approaching me uh i want to treat everybody friendly no matter where i'm at but i'm trying to always be aware of the situation is somebody eyeing you for taking photos because they're curious are they doing it because you know they want to uh they're bugged by it. Are they doing it because they want to rob you? I've never, I've never had someone try and rob me. I've been in probably a dozen different states in Mexico, and I've never had that. That said, it's funny because I was just watching the the one that started. I was just watching the video for the new Leica M11, right? And I'm like, oh wow, that's a cool camera. Even though I'm, I've always kind of been of the opinion that Leicas are, are way overpriced and and I can get more or less the same results with something like an X100 or an X-T3 or whatever. But I think each photographer needs to be inspired by the gear that they choose. And I'm cool with that. But I was actually watching these videos and thinking that camera is so expensive, right? If you buy an $8,000 camera and put a three or $4,000 lens, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars in kit just on your neck more than most people make in a year uh, in Mexico. So to me, having a camera that's a little bit more understated, right? That's not uh, prismido, I think is, is a word that might apply here because if we have a Leica, it's like, oh, this is the best of the best. It's almost like having a Rolex, right? And I'm not criticizing people that use Leicas. I think the Leicas are, are sweet cameras. I'm just saying a camera like this that I can do everything with on the streets, but that costs 13, 14, hundred some odd dollars, right? Somewhere under a thousand, even if I'm out with cameras, under 2000, I mean, even if I'm out with cameras with lenses, I think that ability makes me a little more comfortable. Anywhere in the world, somebody could try and grab that. And if it's a Leica worth five, 10 times as much, well, it's that much more opportunity to do that. So I don't worry about that in terms of my gear, but I'm always aware of my gear. I'm aware of my wallet. It wouldn't matter if I was in France or in the United States, in Idaho or here in Mexico. And so I think being aware on that front is good. But in general, come to Mexico, just explore, just take photos. And if somebody questions you, uh, it's, it's perfectly legal here 
just like most countries if something's in public you can take photos of it and i've even i've even take photos of military and stuff and have them get, get up tight with me and i'm used to those kind of situations because i've been taking photos and videos all my life including as as an activist and so as i walk the streets as i explore i'm documenting uh, the culture i'm documenting what's happening and that includes if I'm documenting military, like police activity. Those are important things to document, not only for accountability, but for historical aspects. And I've, I've flat had, uh, you know, been taking uh, photos of, of military. And sometimes you, you get people that are egotistical. It's not like there was any real security issue. And they just, they're like, oh, no, you can't take photos. And I stood up for myself very firmly. And I said, absolutely, I can take photos. You do not touch me, obviously speaking in the best Spanish I could muster. In any part of the world, the most important things to document are things happening in public, public officials, military, things like that. Through all of history, that's important. Now, I'm not saying you need to go to Mexico and photograph military or police. And I've seen very few of my friends that have come to Mexico and have problems. I would have no fear doing photo tours down here, uh, taking people out to do the landscapes, to do the streets. Uh, it's just a matter of, I think, knowing where you're going. And I've thought about doing uh, tours down here, whether they be street tours, landscape tours, ep epic landscapes, absolutely beautiful landscapes over in the jungles here, just a couple hours away. And so I've thought about a lot of opportunities for that. But the bottom line is, if you come to Mexico, enjoy yourself. Don't don't stick in tourist resorts because, because there's so much real life happening on the street. There's so much light. There's so much color. There's so much culture. There's so much uh, alive down here and it's just a really amazing place to photograph if i could give you three tips for just photographing enjoying and staying safe and taking great street photos in mexico it would be number one respect the people love the people here and i don't mean come down here and be afraid or be intimidated just be one of them try to learn a little spanish before you come or a lot of spanish the more the better right there's apps out there like duolingo and stuff that'll help and you'll find that when you get on the streets you know hardly anything and you have to learn but they'll value that you're trying that alone just shows that you care and that that you want to be enjoying and taking part in their culture uh, don't strut around like you're something special mexico has different economic standards and different culture but it's actually not a poor country on the world scale and so be respectful if people are on street corners and they're you know they're asking for money for a taco or something help them they have a culture that's used to helping each other here uh on things like that but don't look at down on them like if you're from you know England, if you're from the United States, like, oh, these poor people down here, they enjoy their life down here a lot of times more than we do. And so I think number one is is respect. Number two is just look everywhere. Keep your eyes open because the things that they take for granted because they're used to and that we might overlook if we are too busy with tourist eyes, the little details can make beautiful, beautiful street images. And if you just look for the patterns, the color, the stuff you see in buildings, I mean, even look at these buildings behind me, all the colors in these houses, kind of stuff that can be unique and that may not instantly make a great photo, but if you have the right light and the right time of day, yeah, wow. And number three is, I think like anywhere, even if I was shooting the wilderness or the streets in, in California, it's, it's spatial awareness. It's being aware of what you want to do, what you're trying to capture, your visualization for the image. And it's being aware of what's around you. Do you sense something weird? Do you sense that you might be upsetting someone? Sometimes if you're pointing a camera at someone, and, and I'm not saying that people get upset by taking photos down here. Uh, it's just, you know, you're a tourist with a camera. Just, just saying hi, like, how's it going? And hola, buenas noches, como estas? Can go a long ways because you're showing that you're not out doing something weird. You're not staking their joint. A lot of times I think if they see people on the street, maybe with a cell phone, they think they're staking the joint to rob it because petty theft is very common down here. Obviously as a tourist, that's, you're not gonna come off that way, but being open, being friendly, and just being aware of your surroundings, the people in your surroundings, the atmosphere, and then using that to help you make the best photos, 
goes a long way. I, I rarely ask if I can take photos. If if I if it's of, of a a little a little girl or something like that, and her parents are there, and she's in a pretty dress or something like that, and I want her with the city in the background, something like that. Yes, and I'll, and they'll, they're usually happy to do it, and their their daughters, you know, in their in their festival dress, you know, they have it on to show it off, right? Um, so things like that that they expect from tourists. But in terms of observing the culture on the street, uh, no, you can you can observe, you can document, and the the first article actually of the of the Constitution of Mexico protects foreigners and gives them the equal rights that citizens have. And so I think a little bit of just knowledge, but also just respect and, and loving the place, the light, and the people is going to go a long ways. And you're going to get amazing images on the streets and in the natural areas of Mexico. Don't get your eyes too glazed over because the culture is different and you're a tourist. Look for the details. Don't just snap, snap, snap and take a thousand photos. There's a ton of color here. There's a ton of light. There's a ton of culture and people. And because Latin American countries in general tend to be a lot less regulated, a lot more chill, a lot more just live your life, you're gonna find a lot of things happening all at once and intersecting lines and really cool stuff. And you can see as the light's sinking now, it's about the golden hour in about 30 minutes here. And that's that's another video. I just wanted to give you guys kind of some of the fundamentals, show you around a little bit. And if you want to see more like this, if you want to see more on street photography, if you want to see more from the streets down here in Mexico, let me know what you want to see. And I'll try and do it for the channel. But uh, shout out to you, Light Tribe. This one's for you. Peace, and we'll see you on the next one.